So this is the Skywatcher as GTI tracking mount that I usually take with me on my work trips. It is a stable platform for the P900 camera using this L bracket and you've seen it featured in many of my previous videos. Earlier this year I was in New York in the USA and decided to pick up one of these Mead 80mm refractors from B&H Photo. Combined with a ZWO 290MC camera it is a far more capable package for astrophotography than the P900. And the software I use to control the camera is called SharpCat Pro, which is operating in Windows on this Microsoft Surface tablet. It allows you to control very precisely the exposure value, the gain, the frame rate, and will capture in video in AVI format or a number of different image formats, which you can then assemble into a time-lapse video. And one of the great features of this mount is its Wi-Fi capability, allowing you to connect an iPad and control the mount remotely with a variety of astronomy apps. The one I've been using lately is called Luminos, and we basically open the app and connect the mount. And what we can do at this point is select any target in the app. This little reticle is showing where the telescope is presently pointed. But for example, if we select the sun and go to, it is that easy. So I'm looking forward to using it tonight. So what I'll do now is play a number of clips that were taken in recent months with a brief explanation of what you are seeing. And this is a time lapse of the sun taken with my Coronado Hydrogen Alpha Solar Telescope right up until the sun set. What is of particular note is the orientation of the camera. So as we know with an equatorial mount, when it is correctly polar aligned, this main axis is in the same orientation as the rotational axis of the Earth. And that is why the mount is able to cancel out the Earth's rotation and track objects in the sky with a single axis of rotation. Because I am in the Southern Hemisphere, looking along this axis in this direction, we are seeing the direction of up as it would be at the South Pole. Looking in the opposite direction along this axis, we are seeing the direction of up as it would be at the North Pole. And if we orientate the camera to this direction of up at the North Pole, we have a very interesting result when the sun sets. So remember, as you watch this clip, the camera is orientated to the direction of up at the North Pole. So try to predict where you will see the horizon appear from and at what angle it will be for our location at 34 degrees south latitude in Sydney, Australia.
Interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. So in the next one, I pointed the telescope towards the Orion Nebula just after sunset. And as the twilight became darker, the camera was automatically adjusting the exposure and you will see the Orion Nebula come into view. So this one will be quite obvious when you see it, but I just want to explain that typically it takes me about an hour to do a perfect polar alignment on my telescope and set up all the other equipment. However, on this occasion, it was a very rapid setup because it was by sheer luck. I had just checked my astronomy software to see what time the moon was rising and I realized there was going to be a specific event. So I literally only had minutes to go and set up the telescope and that is why it is probably not as nicely focused as I would have liked but you'll still see the main event. And the last one is just a time lapse of the moon, including the moon rise. And I had a second camera following the motion of the equatorial mount throughout the night.
As you can see, we have to contend with some extremely harsh living conditions here in Western Australia. But it's all part of the job. It's a beautiful cloudless sky at the moment and I'm hoping it remains that way tonight so that I can test out the new telescope. Yeah, we're doing it tough in the outback. 